Chapter Nine of Jerusalem to Revelations, a quartet of spiritual experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Jerusalem, Part Nine. Rahab is an eternal state to the deists the spiritual states of the soul are all eternal distinguish between the man and his present state he never can be a friend to the human race who is the preacher of natural morality or natural religion he is a flatterer who means to betray to perpetuate tyrant pride and the laws of that babylon which he foresees shall shortly be destroyed with the spiritual and not the natural sword he is in the state named rahab which state must be put off before he can be the friend of man you o deists profess yourselves the enemies of christianity and you are so you are also the enemies of the human race and of universal nature man is born a spectre or satan and is altogether an evil and requires a new selfhood continually and must continually be changed into his direct contrary but your greek philosophy which is a remnant of druidism teaches that man is righteous in his vegetated spectre an opinion of fatal and accursed consequence to man as the ancients saw plainly by revelation to the entire abrogation of experimental theory and many believed what they saw and prophesied of jesus man must and will have some religion if he has not the religion of jesus he will have the religion of satan and will erect the synagogue of satan calling the prince of this world god and destroying all who do not worship satan under the name of god will any one say where are those who worship satan under the name of god where are they listen every religion that preaches vengeance for sin is the religion of the enemy and avenger and not of the forgiver of sin and their god is satan named by the divine name your religion o oh, deists deism is the worship of the god of this world by the means of what you call natural religion and natural philosophy and of natural morality or self-righteousness the selfish virtues of the natural heart this was the religion of the pharisees who murdered jesus deism is the same and ends in the same voltaire rousseau gibbon hume charge the spiritually religious with hypocrisy but how a monk or a methodist either can be a hypocrite i cannot conceive we are men of like passions with others and pretend not to be holier than others therefore when a religious man falls into sin he ought not to be called a hypocrite this title is more properly to be given to a player who falls into sin whose profession is virtue and morality and the making men self-righteous foot in calling whitefield hypocrite was himself one for whitefield pretended not to be holier than others but confessed his sins before all the world 
Voltaire Rousseau, you cannot escape my charge that you are Pharisees and hypocrites, for you are constantly talking of the virtues of the human heart, and particularly of your own, that you may accuse others, and especially the religious, whose errors you, by this display of pretended virtue, chiefly design to expose. Rousseau thought men good by nature. He found them evil, and found no friend. Friendship cannot exist without forgiveness of sins continually. The book written by Rousseau, called His Confessions, is an apology and cloak for his sin, and not a confession. But you also charge the poor monks and religious with being the causes of war, while you acquit and flatter the Alexanders and Caesars, the Lewises and Fredericks, who alone are its causes and its actors. But the religion of Jesus, forgiveness of sin, can never be the cause of a war, nor of a single martyrdom. Those who martyr others, or who cause war, are deists, but never can be forgivers of sin. The glory of Christianity is to conquer by forgiveness. All the destruction, therefore, in Christian Europe has arisen from deism, which is natural religion. I saw a monk of Charlemagne arise before my sight. I talked with the grey monk as we stood in beams of infernal light. Gibbon arose with a lush of steel, and Voltaire with a racking wheel. The schools in clouds of learning rolled, arose with war in iron and gold. Thou, lazy monk, they sound afar, in vain condemning glorious war, and in your cell you shall ever dwell. Rise, war, and bind him in his cell. The blood-red ran from the grey monk's side, his hands and feet were wounded wide, his body bent, his arms and knees, like to the roots of ancient trees. When Satan first the black bow bent, and the moral law from the gospel rent, he forged the law into a sword, and spilled the blood of mercy's lord. Titus, Constantine, Charlemagne, O Voltaire, Rousseau, Gibbon, Vain your Grecian mocks and Roman sword Against this image of his lord. For a tear is an intellectual thing, And a sigh is the sword of an angel king, And the bitter groan of a martyr's woe Is an arrow from the Almighty's bow. But loss, who is the vehicular form of strong Athona, wept vehemently over Albion, where Thames' current spring from the rivers of Beulah, pleasant river, soft, mild parent stream, and the roots of Albion's tree entered the soul of loss as he sat before his furnaces clothed in sackcloth of hair in gnawing pain dividing him from his emanation enclosing all the children of lost time after time their giant forms condensing into nations and peoples and tongues translucent the furnaces of beryl and emerald immortal and sevenfold each within other 
incomprehensible to the vegetated mortal eyes perverted and single vision the bellows are the animal lungs the hammers the animal heart the furnaces the stomach for digestion terrible their fury like seven burning heavens ranged from south to north here on the banks of the thames lost builded golgonooza outside of the gates of the human heart beneath beulah in the midst of the rocks of the altars of albion in fears he builded it in rage and in fury it is the spiritual fourfold london continually building and continually decaying desolate in eternal labours loud the furnaces and loud the anvils of death thunder incessant around the flaming couches of the twenty-four friends of albion and around the awful four for the protection of the twelve emanations of albion's sons the mystic union of the emanation in the lord because man divided from his emanation is a dark spectre his emanation is an ever-weeping melancholy shadow but she is made receptive of generation through mercy in the potter's furnace among the funeral urns of beulah from surrey hills through italy and greece to hinnom's vale in great eternity every particular form gives forth or emanates its own peculiar light and the form is the divine vision and the light is his garment this is jerusalem in every man a tent and tabernacle of mutual forgiveness male and female clothings and jerusalem is called liberty among the children of albion but albion fell down a rocky fragment from eternity hurled by his own spectre who is the reasoning power in every man into his own chaos which is the memory between man and man the silent broodings of deadly revenge springing from the all-powerful parental affection fills albion from head to foot seeing his sons assimilate with luva bound in the bonds of spiritual hate from which springs sexual love as iron chains he tosses like a cloud outstretched among jerusalem's ruins which overspread all the earth he groans among his ruined porches but the spectre like a hoar-frost and a mildew rose over albion saying i am god o sons of men i am your rational power am i not bacon and newton and locke who teach humility to man who teach doubt and experiment and my two wings voltaire rousseau where is that friend of sinners that rebel against my laws who teaches belief to the nations and an unknown eternal life come hither into the desert and turn these stones to bread o oh, vain foolish man wilt thou believe without experiment and build a world of fantasy upon my great abyss a world of shapes in craving lust and devouring appetite so spoke the hard 
cold, constructive spectre. He is named Arthur, constructing into druid rocks round Canaan, Agag, and Aram, and Pharaoh. Then Halbion drew England into his bosom in groans and tears, but she stretched out her starry night in spaces against him like a long serpent in the abyss of the spectre which augmented the night with dragon wings covered with stars and in the wings jerusalem and vala appeared and above between the wings magnificent the divine vision dimly appeared in clouds of blood weeping when those who disregard all mortal things saw a mighty one among the flowers of beulah still retain his awful strength they wondered checking their wild flames and many gathering together into an assembly they said let us go down and see these changes others said if you do so prepare for being driven from our field what have we to do with the dead to be their inferiors or superiors we equally abhor superior none we know inferior none all equal share divine benevolence and joy for the eternal man walketh among us calling us his brother and his friends forbidding us that veil which satan puts between eve and adam by which the princes of the dead enslave their votaries teaching them to form the serpent of precious stones and gold to seize the sons of jerusalem and plant them in one man's loins to make one family of contraries that joseph may be sold into egypt for negation a veil the saviour born and dying rend but others said let us to him who only is and who walketh among us give decision bring forth all your fires so saying an eternal deed was done in fiery flames the universal concave raged such thunderous sounds as never were sounded from a mortal cloud nor on mount sinai old nor in Havilah, where the cherub rolled his redounding flame loud loud the mountains lifted up their voices loud the forests rivers thundered against their banks loud winds furious fought cities and nations contended in fires and clouds and tempests the seas raised up their voices and lifted their hands on high the stars in their courses fought the sun moon heaven earth contending for albion and for jerusalem his emanation and for shiloh the emanation of france and for lovely vala then far the greatest number were about to make a separation and they elected seven called the seven eyes of god lucifer molech elohim shaddai pahad jehovah jesus they named the eighth he came not he hid in albion's forests but first they said and their words stood in chariots in array curbing their tigers with golden bits and bridles of silver and ivory let the human organs be kept in their perfect integrity at will contracting into worms or expanding into gods and then behold 
what are these ulro visions of chastity then as the moss upon the tree or dust upon the plough or as the sweat upon the labouring shoulder or as the chaff of the wheat flour or as the dregs of the sweet wine-press such are these ulro visions for though we sit down within the ploughed furrow listening to the weeping clods till we contract or expand space at will or if we raise ourselves upon the chariots of the morning contracting or expanding time every one knows we are one family one man blessed for ever silence remained and every one resumed his human majesty and many conversed on these things as they laboured at the furrow saying it is better to prevent misery than to release from misery it is better to prevent error than to forgive the criminal labour well the minute particulars attend to the little ones and those who are in misery cannot remain so long if we do but our duty labour well the teeming earth they ploughed in tears the trumpet sounded before the golden plough and the voices of the living creatures were heard in the clouds of heaven crying compel the reasoner to demonstrate with unhewn demonstrations let the indefinite be explored and let every man be judged by his own works let all indefinites be thrown into demonstrations to be pounded to dust and melted in the furnaces of affliction he who would do good to another must do it in minute particulars general good is the plea of the scoundrel hypocrite and flatterer for art and science cannot exist but in minutely organized particulars and not in generalizing demonstrations of the rational power the infinite alone resides in definite and determinate identity establishment of truth depends on destruction of falsehood continually on circumcision not on virginity o reasoners of albion so cried they at the plough albion's rock frowned above and the great voice of eternity rolled above terrible in clouds saying who will go forth for us and who shall we send before our face then loss heaved his thundering bellows on the valley of middlesex and thus he chaunted his song the daughters of albion replied what may man be who can tell but what may woman be to have power over man from cradle to corruptible grave he who is an infant and whose cradle is a manger knoweth the infant sorrow whence it came and where it goeth and who weave it a cradle of the grass that withereth away this world is all a cradle for the aired wandering phantom rocked by year month day and hour and every two moments between dwells a daughter of beulah to feed the human vegetable Enchune, daughters of albion your hymning chorus mildly chord of affection thrilling ecstatic on the iron reel to the golden loom of love to the moth laboured woof a garment and cradle weaving for the infantine terror for fear at entering the gate into our world of cruel lamentation it flee back and hide in non entity's dark wild where dwells the spectre of albion destroyer of definite form the sun shall be a scythe chariot of britain the moon a ship in the british ocean created by losses hammer measured out 
into days and nights and years and months to travel with my feet over these desolate rocks of albion o oh, daughters of despair rock the cradle and in mild melodies tell me where you found what you have enwoven with so much tears and care so much tender artifice to love to weep to learn to know remember recollect what dark befell in wintry days oh it was lost for ever and we found it not it came and wept at our wintry door look look behold gwendolen is become a clod of clay merlin is a worm of the valley then loss uttered with hammer and anvil chant revoice i mind not your laugh and your frown i not fear and you must my dictate obey from your gold-beamed looms trill gentle to albion's watchman on albion's mountains re-echo and rock the cradle while harm me of that eternal man and of the cradled infancy in his bowels of compassion who fell beneath his instruments of husbandry and became subservient to the clods of the furrow the cattle and even the emittent earthworm are his superiors and his lords then the response came warbling from trilling looms in albion we women tremble at the light therefore hiding fearful the divine vision with curtain and veil and fleshly tabernacle loss uttered swift as the rattling thunder upon the mountains look back into the church pall look three women around the cross o albion why didst thou a female will create and the voices of bath and canterbury and york and edinburgh cry over the plough of nations in the strong hand of albion thundering along among the fires of the druid and the deep black rethundering waters of the atlantic which poured in impetuous loud loud louder and louder and the great voice of the atlantic howled over the druid altars weeping over his children in stonehenge in maldon and colchester round the rocky peak of derbyshire london's stone and rosamond's bower End of chapter nine chapter ten of jerusalem to revelations a quartet of spiritual experience by william blake and others this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony addison jerusalem part ten what is a wife and what is a harlot what is a church and what is a theatre are they two and not one can they exist separate are not religion and politics the same thing brotherhood is religion o oh, demonstrations of reason dividing families in cruelty and pride but albion fled from the divine vision with the plough of nations and flaming the living creatures maddened and albion fell into the furrow and the plough went over him and the living was ploughed in among the dead but his spectre rose over the starry plough albion fled beneath the plough till he came to the rock of ages and he took his seat upon the rock wonder 
seized all in eternity to behold the divine vision open the centre into an expanse and the centre rolled out into an expanse in beauty the daughters of albion divide and unite at will naked and drunk with blood gwendolen dancing to the timbrel of war reeling up the street of london she divides in twain among the inhabitants of albion the people fall around the daughters of albion divide and unite in jealousy and cruelty the inhabitants of albion at the harvest and the vintage feel their brain cut round beneath the temple shrieking bonifying into a skull the marrow exuding in dismal path they flee over the rocks bonifying horses oxen feel the knife and while the sons of albion by severe war and judgment bonify the hermaphroditic condensations are divided by the knife the obdurate forms are cut asunder by jealousy and pity rational philosophy and mathematic demonstration is divided in the intoxications of pleasure and affection two contraries war against each other in fury and blood and loth fixes them on his anvil incessant his blows he fixes them with strong blows placing the stones and timbers to create a world of generation from the world of death dividing the masculine and feminine for the commingling of albions and luva spectres was hermaphroditic urizen wrathful strode above directing the awful building as a mighty temple delivering form out of confusion jordan sprang beneath its threshold bubbling from beneath its pillars euphrates ran under its arches white sails and silver oars reflect on its pillars and sound on its echoing pavements where walk the sons of jerusalem who remain ungenerate but the revolving sun and moon pass through its porticoes day and night in sublime majesty and silence they revolve and shine glorious within hand and coban arched over the sun in the hot noon as he travelled through his journey hyle and schofield arched over the moon at midnight and loss fixed them there with his thunderous hammer terrified the spectres rage and flee canaan is his portico jordan is a fountain in his porch a fountain of milk and wine to relieve the traveller egypt is the eight steps within ethiopia supports his pillars libya and the lands unknown are the ascent without within is asia and greece ornamented with exquisite art persia and media are his halls his inmost hall his great tartary china and india and siberia are his temples for entertainment poland and russia and sweden his soft retired chambers france 
and spain and italy and denmark and holland and germany are the temples among his pillars britain his losses forge america north and south are his baths of living waters such is the ancient world of eurozen in the satanic void created from the valley of middlesex by london's river from stonehenge and from london stone from cornwall to caithness the four zoas rush around on all sides in dire ruin furious in pride of selfhood the terrible spectres of albion rear their dark rocks among the stars of god stupendous works a world of generation continually creating out of the hermaphroditic satanic world of rocky destiny and formed into four precious stones for entrance from beulah for the veil of valor which albion cast into the atlantic deep to catch the souls of the dead began to vegetate and petrify around the earth of albion among the roots of his tree this loss formed into the gates and mighty wall between the oak of weeping and the palm of suffering beneath albion's tomb thus in process of time it became the beautiful mundane shell the habitation of the spectres of the dead and the place of redemption and of awaking again into eternity for four universes round the mundane egg remain chaotic one to the north athona one to the south horizon one to the east luva one to the west thamas they are the four zoas that stood around the throne divine verulam london york and edinburgh their english names but when luva assumed the world of horizon southward and albion was slain upon his mountains and in his tent all fell towards the centre sinking downwards in dire ruin in the south remains a burning fire in the east a void in the west a world of raging waters in the north solid darkness unfathomable without end but in the midst of these is built eternally the sublime universe of loss and anithama and in the north gate in the west of the north toward beulah cathedron's looms are builded and losses furnaces in the south a wondrous golden building immense with ornaments sublime his bright cathedron's golden hall its courts towers and pinnacles and one daughter of loss sat at the fiery reel and another sat at the shining loom with her sisters attending round terrible their distress and their sorrow cannot be uttered and another daughter of loss sat at the spinning wheel endless their labour with bitter food void of sleep though hungry they labour they rouse themselves anxious hour after hour labouring at the whirling wheel many wheels 
and as many lovely daughters sat weeping yet the intoxicating delight that they take in their work obliterates every other evil none pities their tears yet they regard not pity and they expect no one to pity for they labour for life and love regardless of any one but the poor spectres that they work for always incessantly they are mocked by every one that passes by they regard not they labour and when their wheels are broken by scorn and malice they mend them sorrowing with many tears and afflictions other daughters weave on the cushion and pillow network fine that rahab and tirza may exist and live and breathe and love ah that it could be as the daughters of beulah wish other daughters of loss labouring at looms less fine create the silkworm and the spider and the caterpillar to assist in their most grievous work of pity and compassion and others create the woolly lamb and the downy fowl to assist in the work the lamb bleats the sea fowl cries men understand not the distress and the labour and sorrow that in the interior worlds is carried on in fear and trembling weaving the shuddering fears and loves of albion's families thunderous rage the spindles of iron and the iron distaff maddens in the fury of their hands weaving in bitter tears the veil of goat's hair and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen the clouds of albion's druid temples rage in the eastern heaven while lost sat terrified beholding albion's spectre who is luva spreading in bloody veins in torments over europe and asia not yet formed but a wretched torment unformed and abyssal in flaming fires within the furnaces the divine vision appeared on albion's hills and often walking from the furnaces in clouds and flames among the druid temples and the starry wheels gathered jerusalem's children in his arms and bore them like a shepherd in the night of albion which overspread all the earth i gave thee liberty and life o lovely jerusalem and thou hast bound me down upon the stems of vegetation i gave thee sheep walks upon the spanish mountains jerusalem i gave thee priam city and the isles of grecia lovely i gave thee hand and schofield and the counties of albion they spread forth like a lovely root into the garden of god they were as adam before me united into one man they stood in innocence and their skyey tent reached over asia to nimrod's tower to ham and canaan walking with mizram upon the egyptian nile with solemn songs to grecia and sweet hesperia even to great chaldea and teshina following thee as a shepherd by the four rivers of eden why wilt thou rend thyself apart jerusalem and build this babylon and sacrifice in secret groves among the gods of asia among the fountains of pitch and nitre therefore thy mountains are become barren jerusalem thy valleys plains of burning sand thy rivers 
waters of death. Thy villages die of the famine, and thy cities beg bread from house to house, lovely Jerusalem. Why wilt thou deface thy beauty, and the beauty of thy little ones, to please thy idols, in the pretended chastity of uncircumcision? Thy sons are lovelier than Egypt or Assyria. Wherefore dost thou blacken their beauty, by a secluded place of rest, and a peculiar tabernacle, to cut the integuments of beauty, into veils of tears and sorrows, O lovely Jerusalem! They have persuaded thee to this, therefore their end shall come, and I will lead thee through the wilderness, in shadow of my cloud, and in my love I will lead thee, lovely shadow of sleeping Albion. This is the song of the Lamb, sung by slaves in evening time. But Jerusalem faintly saw him, closed in the dungeons of Babylon. Her form was held by Beulah's daughters, but all within unseen she sat at the mills, her hair unbound, her feet naked, cut with the flints. Her tears run down, her reason grows like the wheel of hand, incessant turning, day and night without rest. Insane she raves upon the winds, hoarse, inarticulate. All night Vala hears, she triumphs in pride of holiness, to see Jerusalem deface her lineaments with bitter blows of despair, while the satanic holiness triumphed in Vala in a religion of chastity and uncircumcised selfishness, both of the head and heart and loins, closed up in moral pride but the divine lamb stood beside jerusalem oft she saw the lineaments divine and oft the voice heard and oft she said o lord and saviour have the gods of the heathen pierced thee or hast thou been pierced in the house of thy friend Art thou alive, and livest thou for evermore, or art thou not, but a delusive shadow, a thought that lives not? Babel mocks, saying there is no God, nor Son of God, that thou, O human imagination, O divine body, art all a delusion. But I know thee, O Lord, when thou arisest upon my weary eyes, even in this dungeon and this iron well, the stars of Albion cruel rise. Thou bindest to sweet influences, for thou also sufferest with me, although I behold thee not, and although I sin and blaspheme thy holy name, thou pitiest me, because thou knowest I am deluded by the turning mills, and by these visions of pity and love, because of Albion's death. Thus spake Jerusalem, and thus the divine voice replied, Mild shade of man, pitiest thou these visions of terror and woe? Give forth thy pity and love, fear not, Lo, I am with thee always. Only believe in me that I have power to raise from death thy brother who sleepeth in Albion. Fear not, trembling shade. Behold, in the visions of Elohim, Jehovah, behold, Joseph and Mary, and be comforted, O Jerusalem, in the visions of Jehovah Elohim. She looked, 
and saw joseph the carpenter in nazareth and mary his espoused wife and mary said if thou put me away from thee dost thou not murder me joseph spoke in anger and fury should i marry a harlot and an adulteress mary answered art thou more pure than thy maker who forgiveth sins and calls again her that is lost though she hates he calls her again in love i love my dear joseph but he driveth me away from his presence yet i hear the voice of god in the voice of my husband though he is angry for a moment he will not utterly cast me away if i were pure never could i taste the sweets of the forgiveness of sins if i were holy i never could behold the tears of love of him who loves me in the midst of his anger in furnace of fire ah oh, my mary said joseph weeping over and embracing her closely in his arms doth he forgive jerusalem and not exact purity from her who is polluted i heard his voice in my sleep and his angel in my dream saying doth jehovah forgive a debt only on condition that it shall be paid doth he forgive pollution only on conditions of purity that debt is not forgiven that pollution is not forgiven such is the forgiveness of the gods the moral virtues of the heathen whose tender mercies are cruelty but jehovah's salvation is without money and without price in the continual forgiveness of sins in the perpetual mutual sacrifice in great eternity for behold there is none that liveth and sinneth not and this is the covenant of jehovah if you forgive one another so shall jehovah forgive you that he himself may dwell among you fear not then to take to thee mary thy wife for she is with child by the holy ghost then mary burst forth into a song she flowed like a river of many streams in the arms of joseph and gave forth her tears of joy like many waters and emanating into gardens and palaces upon euphrates and to forests and floods and animals wild and tame from gihon to hiddekel and to cornfields and villages and inhabitants upon pisan and arnon and jordan and i heard the voice among the reapers saying am i jerusalem the lost adulteress or am i babylon come up to jerusalem and another voice answered saying does the voice of my lord call me again am i pure through his mercy and pity am i become lovely as a virgin in his sight who am indeed a harlot drunken with the sacrifice of idols does he call her pure as he did in the days of her infancy when she was cast out to the loathing of her person the chaldean took me from my cradle the amalekite stole me away upon his camels before i had ever beheld with love the face of jehovah or known that there was a god of mercy o oh, mercy o oh, divine humanity how oh, forgiveness and pity and compassion if i were pure i should never have known thee if i were unpolluted i should never have glorified thy holiness 
or rejoiced in thy great salvation. Mary leaned her side against Jerusalem. Jerusalem received the infant into her hands in the visions of Jehovah. Times passed on. Jerusalem fainted over the cross and sepulchre. She heard the voice. Wilt thou make Rome thy patriarch druid, and the kings of Europe his horsemen? Man in the resurrection changes his sexual garments at will. Every harlot was once a virgin, every criminal an infant love. Repose on me till the morning of the grave. I am thy life. Jerusalem replied, I am an outcast. Albion is dead. I am left to the trampling foot and the spurning heel. A harlot I am called. I am sold from street to street. I am defaced with blows and with the dirt of the prison. And wilt thou become my husband, O my lord and saviour? Shall valour bring thee forth? Shall the chaste be ashamed also? I see the maternal lime. I behold the seed of the woman. Cana and Ada and Zilla and Nama, wife of Noah, Shua's daughter, and Tamar and Rahab, the Canaanites, Ruth, the Moabite, and Bathsheba, of the daughters of Heth, Nema, the Ammonite, Zibia, the Philistine, and Mary. These are the daughters of Phala, mother of the body of death. But I, thy Magdalene, behold thy spiritual risen body. Shall Albion arise? I know he shall arise at the last day. I know that in my flesh I shall see God. But emanations are weak. They know not whence they are, nor with attend. Jesus replied, I am the resurrection and the life. I die and pass the limits of possibility, as it appears to individual perception. Luva must be created and Vala, for I cannot leave them in the gnawing grave, but will prepare a way for my banished ones to return. Come now with me into the villages, walk through all the cities. Though thou art taken to prison and judgment, starved in the streets, I will command the cloud to give thee food, and the hard rock to flow with milk and wine. Though thou seest me not a season, even a long season, and a hard journey, and a howling wilderness. Though Vala's cloud hide thee, and Luvar's fires follow thee, only believe and trust in me. Lo, I am always with thee. So spoke the Lamb of God, while Luvar's cloud, reddening above, burst forth in streams of blood upon the heavens, and dark night involved Jerusalem, and the wheels of Albion's sons turned hoarse over the mountains, and the fires blazed on druid altars, and the sun set in Tyburn's brook, where victims howl and cry. End of chapter 10chapter eleven of jerusalem to revelations a quartet of spiritual experience by william blake and others this deeprovox recording is in the public domain recording by tony addison jerusalem part eleven 
but loss beheld the divine vision among the flames of the furnaces therefore he lived and breathed in hope but his tears fell incessant because his children were closed from him apart and anithama dividing in fierce pain also the vision of god was closed in clouds of albion spectres that loss in despair oft sat and often pondered on death eternal in fierce shudders upon the mountains of albion walking and in the vales in howlings fierce then to his anvils turning anew began his labours though in terrible pains jehovah stood among the druids in the valley of annandale when the four zoas of albion the four living creatures the cherubim of albion tremble before the spectre in the starry harness of the plough of nations and their names are urizen and luva and thamas and athona luva slew thamas the angel of the tongue and albion brought him to justice in his own city of paris denying the resurrection then vala the wife of albion who is the daughter of luva took vengeance twelvefold among the chaotic rocks of the druids where the human victims howl to the moon and thor and friga dance the dance of death contending with jehovah among the cherubim the chariot wheels filled with eyes rage along the howling valley in the dividing of reuben and benjamin bleeding from chester's river the giants and the witches and the ghosts of albion dance with thor and friga and the fairies lead the moon along the valley of cherubim bleeding in torrents from mountain to mountain a lovely victim and jehovah stood in the gates of the victim and he appeared a weeping infant in the gates of birth in the midst of heaven the cities and villages of albion became rock and sand unhumanized the druid sons of albion and the heavens a void around unfathomable no human form but sexual and a little weeping infant pale reflected multitudinous in the looking-glass of enithamon on all sides around in the clouds of the female on albion's cliffs of the dead such the appearance in cheviot in the divisions of reuben when the cherubim hid their heads under their wings in deep slumbers when the druids demanded chastity from woman and all was lost how can the female be chased of oh, thou stupid druid cried La without the forgiveness of sins in the merciful clouds of jehovah and without the baptism of repentance to wash away calumnies and the accusations of sin that each may be pure in their neighbour's sight oh when shall jehovah give us victims 
from his flocks and herds instead of human victims by the daughters of albion and canaan then laughed gwendolen and her laughter shook the nations and families of the dead beneath beulah from tyburn to golgotha and from ireland to japan furious her lions and tigers and wolves sport before loss on the thames and medway london and canterbury groan in pain loss knew not yet what was done he thought it was all in vision in visions of the dreams of beulah among the daughters of albion therefore the murder was put apart in the looking-glass of enithamon he saw in vala's hand the druid knife of revenge and the poison cup of jealousy and thought it a poetic vision of the atmospheres till canaan rolled apart from albion across the rhine along the danube and all the land of canaan suspended over the valley of chibiot from bashan to tyre and from troy to gaza of the amalekite and reuben fled with his head downwards among the caverns of the mundane shell which froze on all sides round canaan on the vast expanse where the daughters of albion weave the web of ages and generations folding and unfolding it like a veil of cherubim and sometimes it touches the earth's summit and sometimes spreads abroad into the indefinite spectre who is the rational power then all the daughters of albion became one before loss even vala and she put forth her hand upon the looms in dreadful howlings till she vegetated into a hungry stomach and a devouring tongue her hand is a court of justice her feet two armies in battle storms and pestilence in her locks and in her loins earthquake and fire and the ruin of cities and nations and families and tongues she cries the human is but a worm and thou o male thou art thyself female a male her breeder of seed a son and husband and lo the human divine is woman's shadow a vapour in the summer's heat go assume papal dignity thou spectre thou male harlot arthur divide into the kings of europe in times remote o woman born and woman nourished and woman educated and woman scorned wherefore art thou living and woman educated and woman scorned wherefore art thou living said loss and man cannot live in thy presence art thou vala the wife of albion o thou lovely daughter of luva all quarrels arise from reasoning the secret murder and the violent manslaughter these are the spectre's double cave the sexual death 
living on accusation of sin and judgment to freeze love and innocence into the gold and silver of the merchant without forgiveness of sin love is itself eternal death then the spectre drew vala into his bosom magnificent terrific glittering with precious stones and gold with garments of blood and fire he wept in deadly wrath of the spectre in self-contradicting agony crimson with wrath and green with jealousy dazzling with love and jealousy immingled and the purple of the violet darkened deep over the plough of nations thundering in the hand of albion's spectre a dark hermaphrodite they stood frowning upon london's river and the distaff and spindle in the hands of vala with the flax of human miseries turned fierce with the lives of men along the valley as reuben fled before the daughters of albion taxing the nations darby peak yawned a horrid chasm at the cries of gwendolen and at the stamping feet of ragan upon the flaming treadles of her loom that drop with crimson gore with the loves of albion and canaan opening along the valley of Rephaim, weaving over the caves of machpala to decide two worlds with a great decision a world of mercy and a world of justice the world of mercy for salvation to cast luva into the wrath and albion into the pity in the two contraries of humanity and in the four regions for in the depth of albion's bosom in the eastern heaven they sound the clarion strong they chain the howling captives they cast the lots into the helmet they give the oath of blood in lambeth they vote the death of luva and they nailed him to albion's tree in bath they stained him with poisonous blue they inwove him in cruel roots to die a death of six thousand years bound round with vegetation the sun was black and the moon rolled a useless globe through britain then let the sons of urizen the plough and harrow the loom the hammer and the chisel and the rule and compasses from london fleeing they forged the sword on cheviot the chariot of war and the battle axe the trumpet fitted to mortal battle and the flute of summer in annandale and all the arts of life they changed into the arts of death in albion the hourglass contemned because its simple workmanship was like the workmanship of the plowman and the water-wheel that raises water into cisterns broken and burned with fire because its workmanship was like the workmanship of the shepherd and in their stead intricate wheels invented wheel without wheel to perplex youth 
in their outgoings and to bind to labours in albion of day and night the myriads of eternity that they may grind and polish brass and iron hour after hour laborious task kept ignorant of its use that they might spend the days of wisdom in sorrowful drudgery to obtain a scanty pittance of bread in ignorance to view a small portion and think that all and call it demonstration blind to all the simple rules of life now now the battle rages round thy tender limbs o vala now smile among thy bitter tears now put on all thy beauty is not the wound of the sword sweet and the broken bone delightful wilt thou now smile among the scythes when the wounded groan in the field we were carried away in thousands from london and in tens of thousands from westminster and marybone in ships closed up chained hand and foot compelled to fight under the iron whips of our captains fearing our officers more than the enemy lift up thy blue eyes bala and put on thy sapphire shoes o melancholy magdalen behold the morning over maiden break gird on thy flaming zone descend into the sepulchre of canterbury scatter the blood from thy golden brow the tears from thy silver locks shake off the waters from thy wings and the dust from thy white garments remember all thy feigned terrors on the secret couch of lambeth's vale when the sun rose in glowing morn with arms of mighty hosts marching to battle who was wont to rise with urizen's harp girt as a sower with his seed to scatter life abroad over albion arise o vala bring the bow of urizen bring the swift arrows of light her rage the golden horses of urizen compelled to the chariot of love compelled to leave the plough to the ox to snuff up the winds of desolation to trample the cornfields in boastful neighings this is no gentle harp this is no warbling brook nor shadow of a myrtle tree but blood and wounds and dismal cries and shadows of the oak and heart laid open to the light by the broad grisly sword and bowels hid in hammered steel ripped quivering on the ground call forth thy smiles of soft deceit call forth thy cloudy tears we hear the sighs in trumpet shrill when morn shall blood renew so sang the spectre sons of albion round louver's stone of trial mocking and deriding at the writhings of their victim on salisbury drinking his emanation in intoxicating bliss rejoicing in giant dance for a spectre has no emanation but what he imbibes from deceiving a victim then he becomes her priest and she 
his tabernacle, and his oak grove, till the victim ran the woven veil in the end of his sleep, when Jesus calls him from his grave. Howling, the victims on the druid altars yield their souls to the stern warriors. Lovely sport the daughters round their victims, drinking their lives in sweet intoxication. Hence arose from bath soft deluding odours, in spiral volutions intricately winding over Albion's mountains, a feminine indefinite cruel delusion astonished terrified and in pain and torment sudden they behold their own parent the emanation of their murdered enemy become their emanation and their temple and tabernacle they knew not this vala was their beloved mother vala albion's wife terrified at the sight of the victim at his distorted sinews the tremblings of vala vibrate through the limbs of albion's sons while they rejoice over luva in mockery and bitter scorn sudden they become like what they behold in howlings and deadly pain spasms smite their features sinews and limbs pale they look on one another they turn contorted their iron necks bend unwilling towards luva their lips tremble their muscular fibres are tramped and smitten they become like what they behold yet immense in strength and power in awful pomp and gold in all the precious unhewn stones of eden they build a stupendous building on the plain of salisbury with chains of rocks round london stone of reasonings of unhewn demonstrations in labyrinthine arches mighty eurism the architect through which the heavens might revolve and eternity be bound in their chain labour unparalleled a wondrous rocky world of cruel destiny rocks piled on the rocks reaching the stars stretching from pole to pole the building is natural religion and its altars natural morality a building of eternal death whose proportions are eternal despair here vala stood turning the iron spindle of destruction from heaven to earth howling invisible but not invisible her two covering cherubs afterwards named voltaire and rousseau two frowning rocks on each side of the cove and stone of torture frozen sons of the feminine tabernacle of bacon newton and Locke for luva is france the victim of the spectres of albion lost beheld in terror he poured his loud storms on the furnaces the daughters of albion clothed in garments of needlework 
stripped them off from their shoulders and bosoms they lay aside their garments they sit naked upon the stone of trial the knife of flint passes over the howling victim his blood gushes and stains the fair side of the fair daughters of albion they put aside his curls they divide his seven locks upon his forehead they bind his forehead with thorns of iron they put into his hand a reed they mock saying behold the king of canaan whose are seven hundred chariots of iron they take off his vesture whole with their knives of flint but they cut asunder his inner garment searching with their cruel fingers for his heart and there they enter in pomp in many tears and there they erect a temple and an altar they pour cold water on his brain in front to cause lids to grow over his eyes in veils of tears and caverns to freeze over his nostrils while they feed his tongue from cups and dishes of painted clay glowing with beauty and cruelty they obscure the sun and the moon no eye can look upon them ah alas at the sight of the victim and at sight of those who are smitten all who see become what they behold their eyes are covered with veils of tears and their nostrils and tongues shrunk up their ear bent outwards as their victim so are they in the pangs of unconquerable fear amidst delights of revenge earth shaking and as their eye and ear shrunk the heavens shrunk away the divine vision became first a burning flame then a column of fire then an awful fiery wheel surrounding earth and heaven and then a globe of blood wandering distant in an unknown night afar into the unknown night the mountains fled away six months of mortality a summer and six months of mortality a winter the human form began to be altered by the daughters of albion and the perceptions to be dissipated into the indefinite becoming a mighty polypus named albion's tree they tie the veins and nerves into two knots and the seed into a double knot they look forth the sun is shrunk the heavens are shrunk away into the far remote and the trees and mountains withered into indefinite cloudy shadows in darkness and separation by invisible hatreds adjoined they seem remote and separate from each other and yet are a mighty polypus in the deep as the mistletoe grows on the oak so albion's tree on eternity lo he who will not commingle in love must be adjoined by hate they look forth from stonehenge from the cove round london stone they look on one another the mountain calls out 
to the mountain. Plinlimmon shrunk away, Snowdon trembled. The mountains of Wales and Scotland beheld the descending war, the routed flying, red run the streams of Albion, Thames is drunk with blood. As Gwendolen cast the shuttle of war, as Campbell returned the beam, the Humber and the Seven are drunk with the blood of the slain. London feels his brain cut round. Edinburgh's heart is circumscribed. York and Lincoln hide among the flocks because of the griding knife. Worcester and Hereford, Oxford and Cambridge, reel and stagger, over-wearied with howling. Wales and Scotland alone sustain the fight. The inhabitants are sick to death. They labour to divide into days and nights the uncertain periods, and into weeks and months. In vain they send the dove and raven, and in vain the serpent over the mountain, and in vain the eagle and lion over the fourfold wilderness they return not but generate in rocky places desolate they return not but build a habitation separate from man the sun forgets his course like a drunken man he hesitates upon the chesildon hill thinking to sleep on the seven in vain he is hurried afar into an unknown night he bleeds in torrents of blood as he rolls through heaven above he chokes up the paths of the sky the moon his leprous as snow trembling and descending down seeking to rest on high mona scattering her leprous snows in flakes of disease over albion the stars flee remote the heaven is iron the earth is sulphur and all the mountains and hills shrink up like a withering gird as the senses of men shrink together under the knife of flint in the hands of albion's daughters among the druid temples by those who drink their blood and the blood of their covenant and the twelve daughters of albion united in rahab and tirza a double female and they drew out from the rocky stones fibres of light to weave for every female is a golden loom the rocks are opaque hardnesses covering all vegetated things and as they wove and cut from the looms in various divisions stretching over europe and asia from ireland to japan they divided into many lovely daughters to be counterparts to those they wove for when they wove a male they divided into a female to the woven male in opaque hardness they cut fibres from the rocks groaning in pain they weave calling the rocks atomic origins or existence denying eternity by the atheistical epicurean philosophy of albion's tree such are the feminine and masculine when separated 
from man. They call the rocks parents of men, and adore the frowning chaos. Dancing around in howling pain, clothed in the bloody veil, hiding Albion's sons within the veil, closing Jerusalem's sons without, to feed with their souls the spectres of Albion, ashamed to give love openly to the piteous and merciful man, counting him an imbecile mockery. But the warrior they adore, and his revenge cherish with the blood of the innocent. They drink up Dan and Gad to feed with milk, Schofeld and Cotto. They strip off Joseph's coat and dip it in the blood of battle. Tirza sits weeping to hear the shrieks of the dying. A knife of flint is in her hand. She passes it over the howling victim. The daughters weave their work in loud cries over the rock of Horeb, still eyeing Albion's cliffs eagerly, seizing and twisting the threads of Vala and Jerusalem, running from mountain to mountain over the whole earth. Loud the warriors rage in Beth Peor, beneath the iron whips of their captains and consecrated banners. Loud the sun and moon rage in the conflict. Loud the stars shout in the night of battle, and their spears grow to their hands with blood, weaving the deaths of the mighty into a tabernacle for Rahab and Tirza, till the great polypus of generation covered the earth. In Verulam, the polypus's head, winding around his bulk through Rochester and Chichester and Exeter, and Salisbury to Bristol, and his heart beat strong on Salisbury Plain, shooting out fibres round the earth through Gaul and Italy and Greece, and along the sea of Rephaim into Judea to Sodom and Gomorrah, thence to India, China, and Japan. The twelve daughters in Rahab and Tirza have circumscribed the brain beneath, and pierced it through the midst with a golden pin. Blood hath stained her fair side beneath her bosom. O oh, thou poor human form, said she, O oh, thou poor child of woe, why wilt thou wander away from Tirza? Why me compel to bind thee? If thou dost go away from me, I shall consume upon these rocks. These fibres of thine eyes, that used to beam in distant heavens away from me, I have bound down with a hot iron. These nostrils, that expanded with delight in morning skies, I have bent downward with lead, melted in my roaring furnaces of affliction, of love, of sweet despair, of torment unendurable. My soul is seven furnaces, incessant roars the bellows upon my terribly flaming heart, the molten metal runs in channels through my fiery limbs, O oh, love, O oh, pity, O oh, fear, O oh, pain, O oh, the pangs, the bitter pangs of love forsaken. Ephraim was a wilderness of joy, where all my wild beasts ran, the river canal wandered by my sweet Manasseh's side, to see the boy spring into heavens, sounding from my sight. Go, Noah, fetch the girdle of strong brass, eat it red-hot, press it around the loins of this ever-expanding cruelty. Shriek not so, my only love, I refuse thy joys, I drink thy shriek because hand and hile are cruel 
and obdurate to me o oh, schofield why art thou cruel lo joseph is thine to make you one to weave you both in the same mantle of skin bind him down sisters bind him down on evil mount of cursing mala come forth from lebanon and hogla from mount sinai come circumscribe this tongue of sweets and with a screw of iron fasten this ear into the rock milka the task is thine weep not so sisters weep not so our life depends on this all mercy and truth are fled away from shechem and mount gilead unless my beloved is bound upon the stems of vegetation and thus the warriors cry in the hot day of victory in songs look the beautiful daughter of albion sits naked upon the stone her panting victim beside her her heart is drunk with blood though her brain is not drunk with wine she goes forth from albion in pride of beauty in cruelty of holiness in the brightness of her tabernacle and her ark and secret place the beautiful daughter of albion delights the eyes of the kings their hearts and the hearts of their warriors glow hot before thor and friga o moloch o chemosh o bacchus o venus o double god of generation the heavens are cut like a mantle around from the cliffs of albion across europe across africa in howlings and deadly war a sheet and veil and curtain of blood is let down from heaven across the hills of ephraim and down mount olivet to the valley of the jebusite moloch rejoices in heaven he sees the twelve daughters naked upon the twelve stones themselves condensing to rocks and into the ribs of a man lo they shoot forth in tender nerves across europe and asia lo they rest upon the tribes where their panting victims lie moloch rushes into the kings in love to the beautiful daughters but they frown and delight in cruelty refusing all other joys bring your offerings your first begotten pampered with milk and blood your first-born of seven years old be they males or females to the beautiful daughters of albion they sport before the kings clothed in the skin of the victim blood human blood is the life and delightful food of the warrior the well-fed warrior's flesh of him who is slain in war fills the valleys of ephraim with breeding women walking in pride and bringing forth under green trees with pleasure without pain for their food is blood of the captive moloch rejoices through the land from havilah to shur he rejoices in moral law and its severe penalties loud shaddai and jehovah thunder above when they see the twelve panting victims on the twelve stones of power and the beautiful daughters of albion if you dare rend their veil with your spear you are healed of love from the hills of camberwell and wimbledon from the valleys of walton and esher from stonehenge and from maiden's cove jerusalem's pillars fall in the rendings of fierce war over france and germany upon the rhine and danube reuben and benjamin flee they hide in the valley of raphaim 
why trembles the warrior's limbs when he beholds thy beauty spotted with victim's blood by the fires of thy secret tabernacle and thy ark and holy place at thy frowns at thy dire revenge smitten as yutsa of old his armour is softened his spear and sword faint in his hand from albion across great tartary o beautiful daughter of albion cruelty is thy delight o virgin of terrible eyes who dwellest by valleys of springs beneath the mountains of lebanon in the city of rehob in hamath taught to touch the harp to dance in the circle of warriors before the kings of canaan to cut the flesh from the victim to roast the flesh in fire to examine the infant's limbs in cruelties of holiness to refuse the joys of love to bring the spies from egypt to raise jealousy in the bosoms of the twelve kings of canaan then to let the spies depart to meribah kadash to the place of the amalekite i am drunk with unsatiated love i must rush again to war for the virgin has frowned and refused sometimes i curse and sometimes bless thy fascinating beauty once man was occupied in intellectual pleasures and energies but now my soul is harrowed with grief and fear and love and desire and now i hate and now i love and intellect is no more there is no time for anything but the torments of love and desire the feminine and masculine shadow soft mild and ever varying in beauty are shadows now no more but rocks in horror end of chapter eleven